Hello and welcome to our tour of the world's first 3D printed magnetosphere model, which we created in partnership with NASA's STEAM Innovation Lab and the Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission, or MMS. The Earth's magnetosphere, which is all the regions contained within the Earth's magnetic field, is invisible, so it can be challenging to explain. We'll give you a tour using the model to demonstrate how it can be used in educational situations at multiple levels, ranging from K-12 to subject matter experts. My name is Laura, and with me is Dr. Liz McDonald. We're both from Aurorasaurus. So let's get started. Quick vocabulary note, we are going to talk a lot about plasma and the solar wind. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. It's gas that has been heated so much it separates into positive and negative charges. The solar wind is essentially particles and magnetic fields streaming out from the sun. Sometimes it can be very stormy, and sometimes it can be more calm, but the solar wind is always blowing. First, the outer shell of the magnetosphere, here in bright blue, is called the magnetopause. Specifically, it's a boundary between the solar wind's magnetic field and the Earth's magnetic field. The place where solar wind particles can directly enter the Earth's mag magnetosphere is called the nose of the magnetosphere. And then all of that energy sweeps around the Earth's magnetic field and stretches it from the shape of a symmetric dipole magnet into a long tail like a comet. In this case, we've cut it off so it fits on a 3D printer but feel free to explore options for in indicating that long magneto tail. One possibility would be to make a fabric windsock that could unroll to the proper length and show just how big the magnetosphere is. For younger audiences, the magnetopause is the boundary of the Earth's shield from cosmic particles. It helps keep us safe by deflecting them away around this shape or gaining energy from them to help create beautiful aurora. Another feature you can see are the cusps of the magnetosphere. Those are regions where solar particles can directly enter the atmosphere of the Earth's north and south magnetic poles and cause a special type of cusp aurora. Younger learners may be interested to find out that this is perfectly normal and doesn't hurt us, although satellites, astronauts, and pilots flying over the poles have to be more careful during big solar storms. Now we can look inside the magnetosphere and see what happens to those particles when they enter. By a process known as magnetic reconnection, the solar wind particles can get inside our magnetosphere near the day side noon point. And then they are convected around on both the dawn and dusk sides to the plasma sheet. And that energy gets stored in the plasma sheet in the long tail of the magnetic field. With so much energy, the magnetic tail gets stretched, just like a rubber band, until part of it breaks off and the rest snaps back toward Earth. That makes some particles accelerate along the magnetic field and rain down into the atmosphere, causing and enhancing the beautiful northern and southern lights. The lights are way high up in the upper atmosphere, and the Earth's surface, where humans live, rotates underneath them. The magnetic field lines, which are sort of C-shaped, uh, which connect to the auroral oval field lines, actually connect out to the plasma sheet region, where that magnetic field is snapping back to Earth. The magnetosphere is not entirely to scale, but one important region that we've indicated is called geosynchronous orbit a circular orbit where satellites hover over one place on Earth over a, in a 24-hour orbit. In real life, the radius of that orbit is 6.6 .6 Earth radii. So you can see that it's not quite to scale in our magnetosphere, but we had to make a few approximations so that the smallest pieces of the model are printable and the largest pieces still fit on that printer bed. One of the fun things about the model, though, is that you can introduce the idea of using things other than kilometers or miles to measure huge distances, because you can take a hemisphere of the Earth and count out the number of radii or diameters and drive, divide by two to see how far something is. Students could also convert Earth radii 
to and from kilometers or miles. It's a way to show some of the math that scientists use and to talk about how to handle really big numbers. The geosynchronous region is very important because the particles from the plasma sheet are coming closer to Earth and then start going around the Earth, coming back towards it and going around in different directions. Electrons go around the downward side and ions go around the dustward side. This also has to do with the different types of waves that cause different types of aurora. If you stay out all night watching aurora, you might notice that you get different types of aurora um, from early in the night to late in, very late in the night, early in the morning. For instance, pulsating aurora that you get on the dawnward side is characteristic of wave particle interactions with those electrons. The gray region is known as the ring current. Those particle paths cause a current that is sensed on Earth, indicating the strength of geomagnetic storms. Different types of plasma particles have different densities, energies, temperatures, and directions. They follow the Earth's magnetic field lines and electric fields. Plasma physics is pretty complicated, but really fun. There are also very high energy particles in these regions. In the light blue donut, we have the outer radiation belts composed of highly energized electrons, up to hundreds of millions of electron volts. The amount of energy in these radiation <clears throat> belts can cause concern for satellites in geosynchronous orbit. Long story short, these energized particles are so energetic that they move near the speed of light and can even tunnel through the metal outer skin of satellites. If there's a strong solar storm on a lot of these particles, they can sometimes overload parts of the satellite's electronics and damage them. People like Dr. Liz, who study space weather, help scientists predict when this might happen, so engineers can put the satellites into safe mode before a storm hits. Since we rely on satellites for all kinds of communications and information, keeping them safe is really important. There's also an inner radiation belt but we didn't have space to include it in this version of the model. The outer radiation belt is so important for space weather, we wanted to be sure to include it. But what makes the magnetic field that pulls in all of these particles? Spoiler alert, it's deep within the Earth. You can see here some of the layers of our planet. The blue is called the Earth's crust. That's where we live. Under that is a rocky layer called the mantle, shown here in red. Underneath that is a liquid layer called the outer core. Swirling motions in the outer core, called a dynamo, create the Earth's magnetic fields and the north and south magnetic poles. And inside that is a solid inner core. So as we zoom back out from the Earth, we want to emphasize that space is not actually empty. The near-Earth space environment has all of these characteristic particle populations dancing around. And even in interplanetary space, there's the constantly varying solar wind. Space isn't empty. It's full of invisible, pretty cold plasma particles. So thanks so much for joining us on this tour of the magnetosphere. We hope you'll help us beta test the 3D printed magnetosphere by printing it, trying it out to explain these concepts to learners, and helping us brainstorm ideas for where to take it from here. From Aurorasaurus, thanks again.